You're listening to the Gloves Off podcast, powered by IE Sports Radio, the show that brings you raw boxing debate, with your host, Marcus Los Great. Give you what you want. Give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Club of Podcast. Your first, your last, your everything. And all that is combat sports. We are powered by IP Sports Radio. Your direct. We are coming to you live, straight from your mama's basement, and a crispy, crispy white tea. Before we get started, just in case them feds is listening, (laughs) you got to turn up the volume. You got to turn up the volume. And let them know that all thoughts and opinions of the Gloves Off podcast are the thoughts and opinions of my own, Mr. Marcus Lowe's great. And in no way, shape, or form, the thoughts and opinions of IE Sports Radio. Let's get this show on the road. Gentlemen, ladies, everyone. Did you get the chance to watch the fights this week? I know I did. (laughs) It was a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. (laughs) Uh, It was a beautiful thing. Starting with UFC Fight Night. Now, we talked about this fight last week between... Calvin Qatar and Dan E.G. At the time, I picked Qatar because I was torn because I believed there would be a 50-50 fight. And we seen that Qatar was able to secure an ununanimous decision and what I believe was a complete shutout on his part. Coming into the fight, Qatar was ranked 8th in the division. And now some people on Twitter are talking about the possibility of this man fighting Alexander Volkanovsky. Next. The nerve of you. (laughs) The nerve of you. (laughs) See, that in my opinion... Is too deep of water for Qatar. And at this point in time in his career, he would drown in those waters. 
meaning that he would be easy, easy, easy work for Volkanovsky. I would rather see Volkanovsky versus Max Holloway finish their business first. I would rather see that than to see him get, you know, this layup of a fight from Qatar. Now, that's not to say that Qatar is a pushover. It's just that in this stage of his career, he's not ready for that level. There's levels to this game, ladies and gentlemen. Floyd Mayweather tried to introduce you guys to it. He tried to tell you guys there's levels to this game. You can't just show up in a championship fight and be about that work. Because sometimes you're not cut from that pedigree. And right now, Qatar needs to build up his pedigree. He ain't ready for it. He ain't ready for it at all. Staying with the UFC, did anyone catch the women's fight this weekend between the Queen of Violence, Ariane Lip Lipsky, versus Luann Carolina? Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That had to be one of the most savage knee bars I've ever seen. My kids claim that they heard a pop. <laughs> Based on how savage that knee bar was, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> because it looked like it popped. <laughs> It was one of those type of things where you just cringe during the replay. It was completely disgusting. One could even call it one of the nastiest knee bars in UFC history. Nastiest. She completely earned her fighter bonus this weekend. On the same card, we were blessed with a fight that I've been waiting for since their first meeting. That was the rematch between Davison Figueredo versus Joseph Benavides. Now, for those of you who weren't aware of the fight, of the first fight, Figueredo came in overweight and had no shot at winning the belt. But he went on to fight Benavidez anyway. So if Benavidez would have won, he would have immediately became the flyweight champion. Or at that time, I believe it was for the number one contendership to fight Triple C. That fight happened in February. Then came a headbutt and a knockout. And instead of giving Figueredo his props, Benavidez took it upon himself to say that the knockout was a result of the headbutt. The nerve of him. The nerve of Triple C because... He supported that nonsense. And the nerve of you fans, because I've seen many of you on Twitter supporting that nonsense as well. The nerve of you. <laughs> Which leads up to what happened this weekend. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Figueroa dominated, knocked him down three times before choking him out at four minutes and 48 seconds of the fight round. Complete 
annihilation. Complete annihilation. For me, it would have hurt my ego after being completely dominated after being completely annihilated, after being completely destroyed, watching Figueredo drop to his knees and begin to cry at the feet of Benavides. It was almost to say, look at what you made me do to you. <laughs> it was almost like he was saying, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> I blame you fans for what happened this weekend. <laughs> I blame Triple C for what happened this weekend. You guys got that man destroyed. Annihilated. <laughs> you guys did this to this man. The nerve of you. <laughs> the nerve of you. <laughs> uh, Taryn in the chat says, what do you think of Ariane Lipsky? She definitely lives up to her nickname, the Queen of Violence. She snatched her opponent's soul and her knee. <laughs> Oh, man, that's ruthless. That's ruthless. <laughs> uh, that's completely ruthless. <laughs> I think that she is going to go to the top of the division. And then that's when we're going to see, you know, if those waters are too deep. If she's going to get drowned. You know what I'm saying? Everyone... It's good when you're coming up them ranks. And yeah, some of these fights, you know, are solid. But at the same time, there's levels to this game. You know what I'm saying? So your game has to constantly be improving as you're moving up them ranks. Otherwise, you can get caught with your pants down. What do you think about Raphael Ruiz and the sick dodge against... The Keezy, something straight out of the Matrix. Um, I wasn't impressed. I thought it was a cool move, you know. They put it on, you know, replay. They, um, you know, had it on Twitter, you know. But I've seen it before. <laughs> you know, I've seen, um, you know, basically I've seen. Um, you know, the Matrix do it, you know, <laughs> you know, so I've seen it before. So, I, you know, I even seen John Jones do it before. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Davidson Crooks? You know, I've, I've seen it before. So, you know, for me, you know, I'm going to, you know, do my boy, uh, do do my um my American Idol thing. You know, it's just OK for me, you know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> on to boxing. I got to see a young kid this weekend that I believe everyone should watch out for. This kid's name is Jared Anderson. He's a heavyweight. The kid has a nice jab. And works the body nicely. I can't wait to see more of him. You know, I'm surprised that this is the first time I've seen him. Um, from what I understand, he has a um, deep amateur pedigree. Which um, I'm surprised by because basically I watch a lot of um, amateur boxing. Just because I want to know... You know, when these guys come in, who's going to, who to look out for. So, you know, he definitely impressed me this weekend. 
I'm definitely going to be checking for him more often. Um, I definitely think that um, he could be the future of the division. He could be. Another thing that I've seen coming up, before I get to that, I need to get, I need to address the PVC, Premier Boxing Champions. Where you at? <laughs> Where you at, man? We got top rank here putting on fights twice a week, and you ain't nowhere to be found. Word on the street is, is that you guys are going to come out with, you know, basically the same thing that they're doing on ESPN. You're going to do it on Showtime, and I appreciate that. But couldn't you put it together sooner? Come on now, Heyman. I mean, they're, you've seen the blueprint provided to you by UFC. Top rank, all they did was take the same blueprint and run with it. Get these young boys out here fighting. Get these young boys out here active so that we can see their talent. So that we can, so that they can become household names. You know, this, this inactivity for PBC fighters, I'm not a fan of. Not a fan of it at all. It's complete garbage to me. I just don't understand how you can't figure out the blueprint and put it together so that we could get these young boys out here active. Javante Tank Davis needs to be active. Gary Russell Jr. needs to be active. Leo Santa Cruz needs to be active. You need to get these young boys out here active in these streets. We need to see them. You know, they wondering why they why why they can't get paid the way that, you know, top opposition typically gets paid. It's because no one knows who they are. You know, you got Gary Russell Jr. Believing the man is a superstar. He's good, but you're no superstar. No one even knows your name. So, all I'm asking PBC is to just to get the young champions active. Can we do that? You know what I'm saying? We've had a month of top rank fights. We've had a month. I, I, I take that back. We've had two months of UFC fights. There's no reason whatsoever that you're not active in these streets. There's no reason whatsoever why you're not active in these streets, sir. I need you to be active. I need to see my Sean Porters. I need to see my Danny Garcias. I need to see my Earl Spence. You guys need to get active in these streets. And while I'm on the topic of boxing, Terrence Crawford, come on, bruh. You out here in these streets talking about you need to get fully compensated when you know no fans are coming to the arena. When you know that the equation has changed. Come on, bruh. Come on, man. Come on. The, the, the stance that you're taking is only going to put you on the shelf. Only going to put you on the shelf. It's enough that Top Rank has a hard time finding good fights for you because all the good fighters, if you look at the rankings, 1 through 10, are the vast majority of those fighters are PBC fighters. 
And here you are shooting yourself in the foot, sir. I can't have it. You guys are holding the 147 pound division hostage. And I need you to fight each other, man. I need you to fight each other so that we can stop arguing with one another. So we know out here in these streets who is the best of the best at 147. We need to know it. You know what I'm saying? We're tired of talking about it. We're tired of talking about it. It's time for you guys to get in the ring and see what's good. You know what I'm saying? Someone keep coming to my front yard asking for smoke, and I never give them no smoke. I can't tell them I, I take all the smoke. No. The first time he come in your yard talking about he wants smoke and you say that you want all the smoke, you go out there and see what's good and get that smoke. <laughs> you get so much of it, you choke on it. <laughs> Get that smoke. <laughs> I'm not asking for you to, you know, do anything that is going to, you know, not be able to feed your family. All I'm asking is to take the little pay cut and get active, man. Fight Kell Brook. Fight, um, you know, the other kid that they were talking about bringing up to you, Diaz. You know, keep active. See if you could get Mikey Garcia in the ring. He's a free agent. See if you could get Ugas in the ring. He's one of the lower tier PBC guys. Maybe they might be willing to let him fight you for the purposes of seeing if he could beat you and take the belt back to them. This got to change. We need to see you guys fight, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've been trying to remain neutral. I'm not trying to blame you or Earl, Earl Spence for the reason why the fight hasn't happened, but you guys are putting me in a precarious situation bro <laughs> that's all i'm saying <laughs> you know what i'm saying that's all i'm saying <laughs> the charlo brothers are supposed to be getting active here soon um pretty much there's rumors that um charlo may be fighting Matter of fact, there's rumors that um, Jamel Charlo has agreed to fight Rosario. Uh, for those who don't know who Rosario is, Rosario was the one who upset um, who upset Julian Williams. Um, for the 154-pound um, title back in January. And um, they were talking about him possibly getting back in the ring with um, Julian Williams and basically doing a rematch um, for the title, uh, but uh, they couldn't come to terms to that. So um, Jamal Charlo is going to fight Rosario. That fight is potentially plan for September. I believe it's either going to be um, September 19th or the 26th. And that's going to be a PBC headliner on Fox. I can't wait for that fight. That's going to be a great fight uh, because I believe that Jamal um, I believe that he is going to be the king at 154 he just needs to fight the other champions and um he needs those fights he can't go to 160 uh, because his brother is there 
his brother is campaigning there. So uh, they're hoping um, that, you know, Canelo has done his business at 160 and um, vacates the title. And they're hoping that they could get either Triple G in the ring or they can get, um, you know, Sanders in the ring. They want either one of those two guys, which would be good. You know, basically, um, at 160, it boiled down to Canelo and Triple G. And uh, with them having their two fights, um, you know, that's going to basically open things up because now uh, Canelo is fighting at 168. I think he even had a one uh, fight, one fight at 175, like heavyweight. But um, he's thinking about fighting outside the 160-pound middle, middleweight division. So that's definitely going to open things up for the young boys. You know, these two guys basically have come up the ranks talking that talk, kings only, lions only, you know what I'm saying? So um, it's time to see if they're lions. Let's see what's good, you know what I'm saying? Let's throw them to the wolves and see. If they're everything that they claim to be, you know, I don't mind you being cocky. I don't mind you being um, flamboyant, being um, braggadocious. You know, I don't I don't mind that at all out of my fighters. In fact, it's highly encouraged. But you got to back that up. You know what I'm saying? It's the reason why people love Ali. The reason why people love Mike Tyson. You know what I'm saying? reason why people love Roy Jones Jr. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's everything we want it to be. Everything. This weekend, there's going to be a couple of fights. Matter of fact, Sugar Shames Mosley's son is fighting this Friday versus Jer Jeremy Ramos. Uh, they're going to be fighting on Friday on, I want to say, ESPN. No, they're going to be fighting um, on the zone. They're going to be fighting on the zone. They're going to be a part of the Virgil Ortiz Jr. card uh, where he's fighting Samuel Vargas, which is going to be a great fight. Virgil Ortiz Jr. is the real deal. Everyone's talking about this kid being the next Oscar De La Hoya. Please, 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 if you got a moment this weekend, check out Virgil Ortiz. The dude is serious. 15 fights, 15 KOs. He's about that work. Now we need to see him against top-tier competition. He need to get some of that smoke. You know what I'm saying? He need to get some of that smoke so he can validate. He can validate that he is who he say he is. You know what I'm saying? What else we got on the docket here? One fight that um, you guys were asking for sounds like it's going to be made is the Oscar Valdez versus the Miguel Berchelch um, fight. Um, they're talking about that that could happen in the next couple of months. Um, I can't wait for it to happen because I'm tired of you guys talking about that Burchelt hasn't fought anyone. He's fought the best of that division outside of Gervonta Tank Davis. That's who he's fought. He's fought the best of the division. I can't ask him to do anything more than that. And now he's about to fight Oscar Valdez, who is another young up and coming champion of that division. You know what I'm saying? So I can't wait till that fight get, happens. I'm going to go. With um, Burchell, I've always felt that Oscar Valdez was overrated. I'm going to talk that talk, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to get online and talk that talk looking for all that smoke. 
You know what I'm saying? And I can't wait until it happens. <laughs> I can't wait until it happens. <laughs> And then the last fight that is basically coming up is going to be the Ryan Garcia versus Luke Campbell clash. I'm excited about this fight because Ryan Garcia has asked for the smoke. He's one of the young bucks that's coming up and he's asking for the smoke. He's begging for smoke. He's begging for it. And for some reason, Oscar isn't setting up that, those, those type of fights. I don't know why. Maybe he sees something in the kid that he's concerned with. But Ryan Garcia is asking for it. He's begging for it. He can't wait to get it. So give the kid the smoke. If he drowns, he drowns. But he needs to know, just like we need to know, if he's built for it. We need to know. And the only way that we're going to know if is, is if he gets exposed to the smoke. I want to thank you guys for joining me tonight here at the Gloves Off Boxing Podcast. If you see me on Twitter, you can follow me at Gloves Off Boxing. You can send me an email and I'll answer your questions at GlovesOffBoxing at gmail.com. I'm out. I'm on to the next one. Holla at your boy. Thank you for listening to the Gloves Off podcast, brought to you by IE Sports Radio. Another fight that I can't wait for 
is the Vasily Lomachenko versus Teofimo Lopez fight. That was supposed to happen on May 30th. But that ended up getting pushed out because of the pandemic. Word on the street is that that fight has been rescheduled for October 3rd. I can't wait. That's just three months away, ladies and gentlemen. Three months away. I can't wait. I can't wait. That fight is going to be fire. Hopefully, hopefully, there can be crowds at that time. I doubt that there's going to be crowds three months from now, but hopefully, man, if that fight is right up the street in Vegas, I'm driving down there. I'm watching this live. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. You guys have a good night. Happy Taco Tuesday. Embrace debate with the Gloves Off podcast featuring Marcus Lost Great.